Over 10 million students represented in PISA's latest global assessment were not able to complete even the most basic reading tasks, requiring the kind of reading skills you'd normally master by the age of 10. And just one in 10 students in the OECD area were able to distinguish between fact and opinion based on implicit cues, which is not easy, but which is what the digital world around us is all about. And there has been no real improvement in learning outcomes over the last decade, even though expenditure on schooling rose by more than 15% in the OECD area. You might want to switch to another channel right about now. Impossible to change anything as big, as complex and entrenched invested interests as education. But keep watching. Why? In the Chinese provinces, Beijing, Shanghai, Jiangsu, Zhejiang, which came out on top in PISA. The 10% socially most disadvantaged students showed better reading skills than the average student in the OECD area. And they did as well as the 10% most advantaged students in some of those countries. Also, many of today's highest performing education systems have only recently attained their top positions. Estonia steadily advanced to the top among OECD countries despite the fact that its expenditure per student reigns about 30% lower than the OECD average. Portugal rose to the OECD average level, despite being severely hit by the financial crisis. And also some low-performing countries saw remarkable improvements. Think of Albania, Moldova, Peru or Qatar. Turkey's improvement may look somehow less impressive, but Turkey was able to double the share of 15-year-olds enrolled in school, from 36 to 73 percent between 2003 and 2018 alone. Sweden showed an improving trend since 2012 that reversed earlier declines. PISA always devotes a lot of attention to social inclusion. The reason for that is very simple. Children from wealthier families will always find open doors to a successful life. But children from poor families have often just one single chance in life, and that is a good school that gives them the opportunity to develop their potential. And those who miss that boat rarely catch up, because later education opportunities in life tend to reinforce early education outcomes. And the reality is that in many countries, the zip code still remains a powerful predictor for the success of students in schools. So countries need to work harder to attract the most talented teachers to the most challenging classrooms. In France, in Germany, Hungary, Israel, Peru and the Slovak Republic, the gap in reading between the 10% most advantaged and the 10% most disadvantaged students was equivalent to well over four school years of schooling. But again, the achievement gap varies hugely across countries. In some countries, we can barely see performance differences among students and schools from wealthy and poor backgrounds. And in the same vein, the world is no longer divided between rich and well-educated nations and poor and badly educated ones. That should give us hope. We also need to pay more attention to social and emotional outcomes and career aspirations. Think about gender. Most school systems have done well in helping boys and girls achieve equally well in math and science. But the share of boys who want to work in information technology related jobs is seven times larger than the share of girls. And more than one in four boys said they expect to work as an engineer or a science professional while fewer than one in six girls had so, even when boys and girls did similarly well on the science PISA test. PISA also shows that disadvantaged students tend to hold lower career ambitions, even when they perform equally well than their privileged peers. Only in a few countries, Canada, Chile, Korea, Singapore, Ukraine, and the United States are good examples here, where students' educational expectations both ambitious and aligned with their academic performance. So yes, the challenges are tough, but PISA shows lots of examples where schools and education systems address those challenges successfully. The task for policy and practice is not to make the impossible 
possible, but simply to make the possible attainable. 